Hello everyone. Are you ready for another coloring idea? I have a new one this week. I made certain of it. My name is Robbie Rabala and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Bern, North Carolina. I love inspiring you so you enjoy the paper crafting hobby. My goal is for you to have less frustration when you sit down to create. Um, I've been there, done that, I've had the roadblocks, so I'm hoping I inspire you and help you out. I love showing you different ideas so that you can collect products that you love and that you will use. I collect things all the time. Sometimes I like it and I never use it. Well, no, I want you to use what you have. I also hope that my ideas encourage you to use your stash so you can get new stuff. That's my favorite thing to do is to use up something so I can get something new. So if you're ready for today's idea on another way to color, join me in the studio and I'll show you how. All right, let's get started by gathering our supplies. I'm going to use the Quiet Meadow stamp set, specifically that flower. I haven't played with that flower much, so I'm gonna use that one. I'm using the Irresistible Blooms for this leaf. The, this stamp set didn't have leaves, so I'm pulling this leaf in. Great way to use your stash. If you need something, mix your sets. I have two pieces of scrap white that I will be stamping on and then doing some cutting and die cutting. I have a piece of Orchid Oasis that's five, four by five and a fourth. My card base is white and it's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a fourth. I'm in the US and I make um, A2 size cards. From the Irresistible Blooms dies, I have the die to cut out those leaves. The flower, unfortunately, doesn't have a die, so I will be fussy cutting them. I have my Memento pad, my Daffodil Delight pad, my Garden Green pad, and my Orchid Oasis pad. I also have two blending brushes that I will be using. I needed really tiny ones, so I pulled my, from my stash. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp my leaves with the Garden Green. Um, I love it when I don't have to fussy cut, but every once in a while we have to. So I'm adding these so I can cut them out. All right, I'm gonna set those aside and I'll close up my green and now I'm gonna stamp my flower. And I'm gonna stamp it in memento and then color it in. All right. I hope I didn't mess that one up. I went down and then I thought I might have. All right, now that I have my flowers stamped, I need to do some die cutting, not die cutting, I need to do some coloring first. All right, so I'm gonna start with daffodil and my little tiny blender brush. And I'm going to color the center of my flower. Now, if you have some large images and you want a fun way to color them, pull out your blending brushes and use those. It's a great way to color an image quick and easy. See how easy that was? And it was fast. And now I'm going to color the petals. And again, I'm gonna use a blending brush and I'm gonna add my color all the way around. I am avoiding the center and I'm getting as close to the edge as I can. I don't want to muddy up my center. If my tips are not perfectly colored, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna do the inside first so that I can get those done. And then I'll go back and add some color on the edges. And it's okay if it is not exactly perfect. 
flowers aren't colored perfect in the world. We may see them as perfect, but they're not. And I am, all right, I'm gonna kind of blend this in a little better to smooth it out some. So there's my first one colored. I'm not worried that I went around the outside the lines because I'm gonna fussy cut it out. All right, now I'm going to do the next one. Um, if you don't have blends and you want something different from the markers, um, the markers you have to be very careful with or you get lines. And so, oh, I got a little close to that center. It's gonna be a little different. Um, using a blending brush is a good way to do it. I should, maybe should do the outside first and then the inside. I may try that on the next one. Um, I'm just kind of taking that ink out a little further. And now I'm going to go all the way around. All right, I've got to be more careful on this one. I'm going to start in the outside for this instead. And I love the fact that you can get some variation in your flowers. You can have some light, some dark. Okay. Let me do this. And now I'll do the inside. I probably could have used a smaller brush. I have another small one. I didn't think of it. I probably should have used it. Okay. There we go. So now I have my images colored. Um, if you're worried about going outside the lines, stamp your image and um, on, <coughs> excuse me, masking paper, cut it out and put that, that not, the, not the image, but the outside piece you stamped it on, and that'll help. All right, now I have to do some die cutting and fussy cutting. So let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, I got two of my flowers cut out and um, three the, the leaves, but I wanted to share a tip for fussy cutting. If I have an image to cut out, a lot of times it's flowers, I will take and I will cut all the way around, except for a few spots where I can easily do a, um, go down and come back up. I find it easier to do it this way all the way around and cut off the um, bulk of what you have to cut. And then what I do is I go back in and I work my way around and basically I'm cutting a V and if I have a corner that's not round, I just kind of trim it up. But this to me has worked and maybe it will work for you. I mean, it's a lot easier than trying to go all the way around and get down there and into the little tiny pieces. It just helps, it gives it a little bit more give, the paper, whereas if you cut down in there all the time, you sometimes rip your paper. And so there it is, I've got them all cut, all right? And I hope that was in the camera, I didn't even look. All right, let's get our card put together. Um, these are gonna go on here, but it's really plain. So I've pulled in the words, for lack of a better term. It's a grunge piece from the Quiet Meadows stamp set. And I'm gonna do some tone on tone stamping. So using my Orchid Oasis, and I might try off stamping it and see what it looks like. So let's see if that works. I'm gonna pull in a piece of scrap paper and if it doesn't, I can flip it over. So I'm gonna stamp it here. Oops, upside down, good thing I did. Yeah, I'm gonna off stamp it so that I get a lighter color. Ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, now I have Orchid Oasis ink on my, um, pad. 
and I'm just kind of, oh, oh well, start again. There's always two sides to your um, paper. So if you mess up, flip it over and use the other side. And this is just gonna add some interest and texture. You wanna vary the background, those some. All right, like so. All right, there we go. And I didn't worry if it was straight or not. It's just a little bit of interest in there. So now let's get our card put together. Um, I didn't pull ribbon or gems. Sometimes when I'm creating, I get my card put together and it does need something. So I, um, I'm looking for my bone folder. Here it is. Um, I will grab something. All right, now this is gonna go on like this. When you put this down, make sure your letters are the right way. Don't stamp it the right way and then put it on upside down. I have done that and had to take my card apart. And it ruins the card base. So you have to you get another card base. But that's one of those things with paper crafting. And I'm not putting a sentiment on this either. So, all right, now these are all gonna go on with dimensionals. So now I've gotta put my dimensionals all on the back. Okay, rather than you watch me put down dimensionals and take the backs off, I went ahead and did that. I also grabbed the in color dots. So I figured if I needed them, I have them. I may need the sparkle ones. It just depends. So I'm gonna take my flower and I'm gonna start down here in this corner. And then I'm gonna put another one here and another one, oops, that way. I always look at the way they go. All right, and then this is gonna go here. I'm gonna stick that one in there. And the advantage of using the dimensionals like I have is that gives me some space to tuck in that last leaf under there. And you know what? I think I need some sparkle, so let me grab some of my sparkle gems. I didn't know if I would like the iridescent or the silver pearls, so give me a minute. And let's, let me play with it and see. Oh, those look really nice. Um, let me try this and see what these look like. These don't show up. I'm going with the silver. All right, so let me get my take your pick tool. Uh, tighten it up. And I'm going to put down my gems. And I'm just going to sprinkle them on wherever I want and oops that one kind of went the wrong way come on get off now it's stuck in the putty um, there we go got it all right and then this one I think I'm gonna put no, I think I'm gonna put it there. I'm looking at where they are. I don't want them in a line, so to speak. So there you have it. A fun card using coloring with blending brushes. I hope you enjoyed today's coloring card idea and that you'll check out Vicki's um, card also. Um, she, I, she does a video also. I have to look up her um, YouTube channel, but I will put a link to her blog below so that you can go in and see her video also. Have a great day. Bye.